Welcome to the Brad and Taylor Show. Today we have Glenda Baker. You're listening to the Brad and Taylor Show, a podcast that inspires entrepreneurs to pursue their passions. We're sitting down with some of the best to learn how they got started and some lessons they learned along the way. Hey, how's it going? It is amazing. How is it going with you guys? We're awesome today. We're doing good. We're doing good. So tell us a little bit about what you do. I'm a real estate agent in Atlanta, Georgia, and I have been selling real estate since Jesus was a baby, almost 29 years now. Wow. Good for you. Good for you. So when you were, uh, when you were younger, is this what you had planned for the future? What was your, what was your plan? Oh, I don't know that I had a plan. I'll be honest with you. I used to design and manufacture ladies clothing back in the day and I loved doing that. And then, um, the people were just really mean in retail. And I said to my mom, I said, I hate this retail business. And she said, well, pumpkin, you need to go get your real estate license. So that's what I did. And the rest is history. That's awesome. So when you, uh, uh, do you just jump right into it full time or do you uh, kind of gradually go into the real estate? How'd that go? Well, I actually needed a paycheck and real estate is commission sales only. Yep. So I actually interviewed to be an assistant for a couple of different um, I guess it was a, a, a group of ladies. They were going to share me as their assistant. Mm-hmm. It wasn't because you didn't have teams back in 1992. Nobody considered themselves a team. Yeah. So um, I went interview with these three ladies and I popped in and I was, and they were like soldiers. Like they did all this reload business and all this, all these fancy houses, but they were buttoned up. I mean, they were <laughs> buttoned up. <laughs> And I was there about, I don't know, maybe five or seven minutes and they threw me out. They're like, you are way too bubbly. We are never, ever going to hire you. And so then I went to another appointment and those girls just loved me. I mean, they loved me and I knew I got the job. They called me the next day. They're like, Linda, we love you. I'm like, oh my gosh, I loved you guys too. I'm so excited. She's like, we are not going to hire you. I'm like, excuse me. She's like, yeah, be an agent for long. So we don't want to train our competition. We wish you the best of luck. So I had actually been reading a book called How to Develop a Six-Figure Income in Real Estate. And when I did that, um, it said, call everybody that you know and tell them they can buy a house or sell a house, whichever one is fine with you. And I did that and I had five listings. Wow. <laughs> and so I went to this broker and I said, hey, I've got five listings. Five people that want to list your house with me, but I don't even get my license. Will you hire me? And she was like, uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so they hired me in September. And by December, I was agent of the month. <laughs> that's nice. awesome that's yeah. awesome it's crazy how that works out isn't it <laughs> yeah i mean i actually read the book i did every single thing that that book said to do and it worked that's awesome nice. so take us to your first listing out of those five how did that go for you oh well it wasn't very good <laughs> um because the seller died after the oh, contract no. was accepted but before the closing oh wow oh. and i didn't tell anybody because his partner said, it's okay. I've got a power of attorney. I can sign for him. And everybody knew that the seller was sick. So everybody knew the seller was sick and he was selling this unit and it was $60,000 and every, and everybody knew he was selling this unit because he was sick. And so he, um, so the closing attorney calls and she goes, Hey, I just want to see if the seller's going to be at closing. And I'm like, Nope, the seller's not going to be at closing. And she's like, okay. And I said, his power of attorney is going to be there. She's like, okay, great. No problem. And then she calls up. She goes, Glenda, is the seller dead? <laughs> oh, I, oh, man. And I'm like, let me call you right back. So I called the partner and I said, hey, I said, they're asking if he's dead. And he's like, well, you got to tell him that he's dead. And I'm like, oh, God, but well, what if I don't <laughs> close? What if I don't get paid? Like, I hadn't gotten paid. This is my first listing. This is going to be my first closing. Right. So sure enough, I called back and I said, Linda, he's dead, but it's not a problem because there's a POA. She goes, the first thing they teach you in real estate school is that the POA dies when the person does. And I nearly had a nervous breakdown. <laughs> oh my. Oh, and did you end up closing on that one? We did. We closed and it was about three days late. That was it. Oh, nice. Wow. Okay. So it ended up turning out then. Yeah. I mean, all's well that ends well, right? But what was really bad was my next closing the listing agent died so the first wow. closing the seller died and the second closing the oh. listing agent died and my broker like brought me into the office into her office and she's like okay glenda she's like if another person dies in the next transaction i think that maybe that's a sign that real estate is not for you and i was like oh gosh so i was just praying on that third closing that nobody died <laughs> 
It's just that and bad. nobody did, right? Because you're here. This is your path. So <laughs> no, nobody died. Nobody died. It was it was it was great. It was great. Wow. Yeah. You can't beat that story. <laughs> well, you probably could because I sold the wrong house, and that probably is a better story than that. But oh, anyway. now we want to hear that one. <laughs> yeah, now you got to tell us about that one. How did you sell the wrong home? I was showing this guy houses. Okay, I showed him five houses. Two of the houses were on the same street oh. with the same broker. Okay, okay, so, so bro- same brokerage, and he says I want to make an offer on the Buckhead broker listing on West Paces Ferry, and I'm like, okay, great. I wrote the contract. He signed the contract. I sent it to the listing agent. The seller signed it and he was going to tear it down. So he didn't do an inspection. He didn't do an appraisal. And so he calls me on Sunday night before closing. And he's like, Hey, Glenda, people are still living in the house. I'm like, nobody's living in the house. He's like, Glenda, people are living in the house. I'm like, no, nobody's living in the house. So I call the listing agent. I'm like, somebody's living in the house. They're like, she's like, no. Maybe it was my assistant that went by to pick up a sign or something. Nobody's living in the house. And the house was vacant when I showed it to him. It was in a state. So we go to closing Monday morning and I had driven him to closing. Cause remember this is back in the olden days when people got in the car with you. So I had driven him to closing. And so then we're going to go back by the house and we go up Habersham and I'm going to turn right to go to the house on West Texas Ferry. Oh. Ah. Um, and I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to entertain him. Oh, ha, 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 ha. So I turn left and I'm driving down and I see the Buckhead broker sign because the house is still for sale. And you see, there's people living there. No lie. I like saw my life flash before my eyes. I flipped that car around and I sped down that street and I pulled in that driveway. I jumped out of the car. I'm like, this is the house you bought. And the guy's like, what? Oh, and no. I'm like, yeah, like this is an acre. Like, do you understand? Like I, that other house, like nobody wants to live on that side. Like that was like a quarter of an acre. Like I could have never gotten my house for the same price that I got to this. Like this, like, look, you're going to build your dream home and here's the pool and here's the carriage house. <laughs> and the guy is like, I can't believe you sold me the wrong house. I'm like, I didn't sell you the wrong house. This is the right house. And he was like, you know, I guess you're right. He's like, I guess this is probably a better lot. And I, so I got him back to his car and literally I had to pull over. I was physically ill. I literally thought like I, I used a real estate life on that deal. So yeah, that was probably pretty bad. Wow. Wow. But he ended up closing on the other home. No, he, he closed on the, on the house. We had yeah. already closed. Yeah. We had closed. Oh, and wow. it was hilarious because the broker, she's, I mean, she, at that time she was a dinosaur. And so that was like 25 years ago. And so she, and she's still in real estate. Every time she sees me, she's like, (laughs) Glenda Baker, every time I see you, the only thing I think about is you selling the wrong damn house. (laughs) She's like, I've sold thousands of houses since then, lady, that weren't the wrong house. That's the only thing you remember, but yeah. (laughs) Well, I'm just glad glad that it worked out with the, with the buyer. Yeah. Because you, that would have been like, uh, what am I going to do now? Yeah, it was. It was really bad. It was so funny. But I went ahead because the broker of that of the of the listing agent called me. He's like, Linda, he's like, how do you sell the wrong house? I said, you probably shouldn't ask me that because you tra- taught me contract law. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, but it all turned out fine. And that guy bought five more houses and, you know, everything was fine. Wow. Yeah, that is a great story for you to share because I'm sure that it's not the only person that's happened to <laughs> No, it's not. No. I've been in conferences before when one or two other people said they sold the wrong house. Although it didn't end as well for those people as it did for me. Yeah. <laughs> when you yeah. first started out in real estate, was there one piece of advice that anybody gave you that has just stuck with you throughout the years? Um, I would probably say talk to everybody that you know. Okay. You know, like, re- I mean, really, that's the one thing that in that book that I read, it was like, everybody is a potential client talk to every single person that you run into. So now, you know, whenever somebody said, cause wherever you go, people are like, Hey, how are you doing? And I always say, living the dream, selling houses every day. Oh, you're in real estate. I am in real estate. Oh, wow. Well, you know, my neighbor's thinking about selling, or I wonder how much my house is worth. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, please tell me, you know, somebody who wants to sell their house because I have people standing in line to buy houses. And it just organically opens up a real estate conversation because people always want to talk real estate. Yeah. 
hundred percent. How, what is the major difference between your marketing from when you first started out to now? Have you done anything kind of differently? Have you kind of just stuck with the same, same stuff that always has worked? Um, social media and video have really been like the big, 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 big change for me. I mean, I mean the TikTok videos and the tick I mean all of that following has been absolutely crazy for me yeah. and it's really helped me um you know m- help my sellers and my buyers understand like how important video is in real estate yeah that's awesome so tell us about your tiktok yeah, well it's a little bit crazy <laughs> um it's i mean it's the following has grown so uh, like in mid April, I had uh, a few videos that went viral. And then in May, I had a, a, a big video that went super viral. And um, so we've done, we've gotten tons of leads and um, listing appointments and buyers. And it's just another layer of credibility uh, where people check you out. Nothing accelerates proof, uh, credibility faster than proof. And I think that people look at social media as a layer of your credibility. We're used to, you know, back in the olden days, it was a brick and mortar business and then it was your website. And now really it's your social presence. Um, And, you know, the internet is not a a destination, you know, it's an experience. And I think that people really need to understand that people don't question your experience when they're enjoying the experience with you. Yeah, for sure. What has been your favorite TikTok that you have created? Well probably my favorite TikTok that I've created is the biggest one where I sold a gigantic house and made $137,000 and I put money away. So I think that that resonated not only with a lot of people that were real estate agents, but I think that it's very taboo for real estate agents to talk about how much money they make. And I think that just being um, very candid and transparent about, you know, how much money I made and that I I made a mistake with that rather than buying real estate, investing that in real estate, I invested it in depreciating assets um, that are worth nothing today. Whereas if I had invested it in real estate, you know, the home that was $100,000 in 1995 just sold for a million dollars. So that was just a great example. And I think that it was a great learning lesson for me. And I hope it inspired and helped other people as well. It seems like it did because it's been shared over 53,000 times. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. That's crazy. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> a lot of people are taking that advice now. Yeah, absolutely. So kind of going forward with the next year or two um, with you and your business, what what kind of goals do you have in plan in place? What uh, kind of, I'm what really looking with? at, you know, moving into a lifestyle brand. I, my whole goal every single day is to inspire, impact and inform people and inform people. And however I can do that with my brand, whether it's through real estate or creating a lifestyle or, coaching people, mentoring people. For me, that's what's most important. I just want to be able to impact one person every single day. And I know that if I do that, that the world is a better place. That's awesome. I like it. So let's say you had to start all over today and you only had a thousand dollars. How would you spend that first thousand dollars? Um, I would spend that thousand dollars probably creating your brand. Like really, like people don't realize they think that like used to it was your logo, like McDonald's and Coca-Cola, like the most recognized logos in the world. Today, especially in the real estate industry, I think that your photo is your logo. That is your brand. That is your presence because people are doing business with people. A lot of people think that because of online real estate companies like Zillow and Offerpad and Redfin, that you know the real estate agent is irrelevant or going to become extinct. And now more than ever, having a personal brand attached to your business is critical. So I would spend, I would spend every single penny on creating content, creating video and developing that brand, which I believe is the foundation of your business. Absolutely. hundred percent agree with that one as well. Um, Thanks for coming on today. Before we go, is there any um, contact information you'd like to share with everybody in case they want to get a hold of you? Oh, my stars and stripes. I'm the most unanonymous person in the world. So literally it's like Google Glenda Baker, G-L-E-N-N-D-A-B-A-K-E-R. Cause I'm Glenda Baker on everything. LinkedIn, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Just Google me and you can find everything that you wanted to know and stuff you didn't want to know and probably stuff <laughs> I didn't want you to know, but you can find it on Google. That's awesome. 
Hey, thanks for coming on and sharing your story with us today. Hey, it's my pleasure. Thanks so much for inviting me. Thanks for having me. I hope that you guys got some value out of the content that I share. Oh, yeah. Are these working? All right. There we go. Oh, there we go. I think they're working. Should we tell oh, them? Uh, mine keeps falling. It doesn't like my voice. What do we got to tell them? Subscribe. Subscribe? What do we do? We got a point out? Hey, I think there's a subscription button. Like, it might be. It might be there. It might be right there, too. Somewhere. Somewhere. Find it. It's red. Yeah. It's and red. it's blue. It's green. I don't really know. It's, it's a color. This mic isn't even attached. Did you plug these in? Well, I guess uh, I wonder if they can hear us. Yeah, I wonder if they hear us. Well, we should probably tell them if, if they can hear us. Uh, we should probably tell them also give us a five star review for listening to on Apple. That'd be cool. Five, five star stars, review. guys. Share it with everybody they can think of. We won't take but, four stars. I mean, I don't even think these are on. I mean, this no, is, I don't think this is working. This is not working.